we now discuss the strain compatibility equations. Strain compatibility equations are the fundamental equations in the field of structure mechanics, and they are used to ensure the strains or deformations in different parts of a structure are compatible or consistent with one another. For example, if we have got a body which is made up of boxes shown in black, by compatibility, we would mean that after deformation, all these boxes stay fitted with each other. In the figure, we can see that the red boxes have moved relative to each other and there are gaps at the corners. Thus, the red boxes have lost their compatibility, whereas the black boxes, they are still compatible. Thus, we can say that compatibility conditions actually guarantee that when a body deforms, there would exist no discontinuities or gaps inside the body after deformation. If we already know the deformation map of a body, then we don't need to consider the compatibility because the compatibility is automatically achieved. Please remember, a deformation map in structural mechanics or solid mechanics is a graphical or a mathematical representation that illustrates how a body or structure undergoes deformation in response to the applied loading. This map provides a visual or a quantitative description of how different parts of the structure change shape and position due to the forces and moments acting on it. Deformation maps are used to analyze the behavior of structures, understand stress and strain distributions, and assess the structural integrity under different loading conditions. Thus, if we know the deformation map correctly, then the compatibility is automatically satisfied. However, there can be instances where the deformation map is not known. For example, if we are conducting experiment in the lab and we are interested in finding out the deformation of a structure at a particular point, the only way we can find the deformation out is via strain gauges. So we can attach strain gauges at the reference point within the structure and find the relevant strain at the particular point of reference. Having known the strain field, it is not necessary that the displacement map given by the strain field is a compatible map. Thus, it is necessary to use compatibility equations for ensuring displacement field got from the strain field is compatible. Since we have six independent strain components within an element of a strain, correspondingly, we have six compatibility equations. We will now derive the six compatibility equations. Let us assume that we have got a structure in a Cartesian x1, x2, and x3 plane. The displacement of any point in the direction of x1 is taken as u1, in the direction uh, x2 is taken as u2, and the axial strain in the direction x1 is given as partial u1 by partial x1. Similarly, the axial strain corresponding to the face having outward drawn, drawn normal in the direction 2 is equal to partial u2 by partial x2. We can take double derivative of strain 1 1 with respect to x2 and we get partial cube u1 by partial x1 partial x1 square. Similarly, we can take double derivative of strain 2 2 with respect to x1 and we will get partial cube u2 by 
partial x1 square partial x2. Please note that u1, u2, and u3 are functions of x1, x2, and x3. We already know that the shear strain is given as 2 times epsilon 1, 2 is equal to partial u1 by partial x2 plus partial u2 by partial x1. Taking double derivative of this shear equation with respect to x1 will give us partial cube u1 by partial x1 partial x2 square plus partial cube u2 by partial x1 square partial x2. Since we have already derived the value of partial cube u1 by partial x1 partial x1, x2 square as partial square strain 1 1 by partial x2 square. Similarly, the value of partial cube u2 by partial x1 square partial x2 is equal to partial square strain 2 2 by partial x1 square. After plugging these values in this equation, we get our first compatibility equation, which is partial 2 strain 1 1 by partial x2 square plus partial 2 strain 2 2 by partial x1 square is equal to 2 times partial 2 strain 1 2 by partial x1 partial x2. In a similar way, we can derive the other two equations, which are partial 2 strain 2 2 by partial x3 square plus partial 2 strain 3 3 by partial x2 square is equal to 2 times partial 2 strain 2 3 by partial x2 partial x3 and partial 2 strain 1 1 by partial x3 square plus partial 2 strain 3 3 by partial x1 square equal to 2 times partial 2 strain 1 3 by partial x1 partial x3. Please note that all these three equations follow the same logic. After deriving the three compatibility equations, we can then derive additional three equations as we have discussed that strain 1 2 is equal to half partial u1 by partial x2 plus partial u2 by partial x1 in bracket. Strain taking partial derivative with respect to x3, we get half times in bracket partial square u1 by partial x2 partial x3 plus partial square u2 by partial x1 partial x3. In a similar fashion, we can have partial strain 2 3 by partial x1 equal to half in bracket partial square u2 by partial x1 partial x3 plus partial square u3 by partial x1 partial x2 and the remaining partial strain 1 3 by partial x2 is equal to half in bracket partial 2 u1 by partial x2 partial x3 plus partial square u3 by partial x1 partial x2. Please notice there is again a trend appearing in all these three equations. Now we can take the negative of this first equation and add it to the other two equations. And after that, we can take partial derivative with respect to x3. If we perform algebraic operation on these three, we will see that most of the terms will cancel out and we will be left with partial square u3 by partial x1 partial x2. Since partial u3 by partial x3 is equal to partial strain 3 3 by partial x1 partial x2 and this gives us the fourth equation. Similar to this equation we can have then the other two equations developed following the same trend. So in the second equation we can take the negative of strain 2, 3 by partial x1 and add it to the rest of the two equations. For the second equation, we can then take partial derivative with respect to x1 for the whole equation and we get the second equation.
which is equal to partial strain 1 1 by partial x2 partial x3 equal to partial derivative with respect to x1 in bracket minus partial strain 2 3 by partial x1 plus partial strain 1 2 by partial x3 plus partial strain 1 3 by partial x2 similarly we can develop the third equation these six equations are called the compatibility equations